So I noticed that my most viewed video ever on my channel is about what it's like majoring in game design. That original video that I made several years ago is a little bit out of date now. It's mostly relevant still, but I thought I'd remake it to, you know, a higher modern standard. And given the fact that now I'm graduated, I've just recently graduated like two months ago, I'm now working in industry, can you believe that, in, <laughs> in a job in my field. Holy cow. I thought I would remake the video with a slightly more holistic lens of everything. Because when I made that video, obviously I was in the throes of it. But now I can look back, hopefully wiser, certainly older, and with a better camera. That being said, that original video is somewhat funny still. There are bad words, but I guess if you're interested in seeing what sophomore slash junior year me was thinking versus me now, you could watch it. But the idea is I'm gonna be replacing that one with this one going forward, hopefully. And no curse words this time, or at least very few, so hopefully this will appeal to a wider audience. Really my goal is <laughs> for a class or something to play this for a career fair. So if you happen to be watching this as homework or in class years from now, let me know. That would really make my, my week, my year, my everything. First off, let's have some disclaimers. My game design degree experience is not a reflection of every game design degree experience in the world, okay? I went to one school in one city in the United States and the experience at every single game design degree program in the world is going to be slightly different given the fact that there is no standardization in games. Games are such a new media and such a new thing to learn and major in that oftentimes every program is making it up as they go. Uh, even for people going into my exact degree program at Drexel now are going to have a different experience than the one that I had five years ago when I decided to pursue game design. For example, when I was learning uh, 3D modeling in Maya, it was the same exact classes as the animation students took, so there was no optimization, there was very little games focus, it was for like animation, uh, cinematography, stuff like that, so it was totally unoptimized. But nowadays, if you go to Drexel and learn game design, you will actually learn real-time visualization 3D modeling, can you believe that, where you can render in-engine. I'm a little jealous, but it doesn't matter now because I have a job anyway, so that's just what I mean. Like, things change radically. The nature of tech, especially, is that it changes, so keep that in mind. Some of the things that I'm going to say might be slightly outdated, like next month, so I'm going to try and keep it as general as I can so that it can apply to as many degree programs as possible. One other thing is that when I say the word game design, I'm also talking about degree programs that are called like game art, maybe even game development, like the name itself can vary, but what it's generally going to be is a generalist degree for people who want to go into game making on the artsy side. Not really coding specific, there might be overlap, like in my degree there was overlap, but generally it's not a computer science, it's a separate art form. So I was part of the art college at my school. What is game design? And what is the point? You might be thinking that you are going to become the next Todd Howard or you are gonna make the next GTA or the next Fortnite because you majored in game design, right? And the truth is, that is possible. <laughs> uh, I know people who work on the next GTA, who work on the next Fortnite, you know, stuff like that, out of my degree program. I might be working on a major game right now, wink wink, that I can't talk about. But anyway, the point is, these things are possible and you might be able to work on the next big game, but there's a lot of steps and a lot of intricacies on the way. In my previous iteration of this video, I was a little bit negative on the outcomes of majoring in game design because obviously nobody had a job my sophomore year. So also, it is true that game design is the least employed of all of the digital media majors at my school. And that's true, I have the stats, I saw it. I was the work study for my program director. I saw how many people actually have a job in games today versus how many people got the degree, right? And it is the least employed, but hope is not lost. Now that I'm actually graduated, I see a fair, fairly high percentage of people are actually employed. My, okay, not my graduating year, because we split into four and five year students, but my 
year of entry of my class. All of us who started in 2018, probably. We are the most successful class and generation of game design students out of my degree program ever. So obviously something's, something's working, <laughs> something's connecting here. So I'm not gonna say that anything is guaranteed just because you're pursuing game design, but there are some things that you can do to help yourself actually be employed in games. Cause that's the point, right? If you major in game design, you probably want a job in industry or there's one other situation where game design is a great, actually holistic degree to get is if you wanna be an indie game developer, that's like exactly what the game design degree is. It's a general knowledge of anything. So if you want to be the next guy who makes Minecraft or Stardew Valley, a game design degree might actually be the right path because you learn a little bit of everything. Master of none though, but we'll get into that. If you decide to major in game design, game art, your coursework will likely involve tons of different subjects, okay? So think of it generally as a sampling plate, or in my middle school, they had something called the wheel where you would just rotate classes every 10 weeks and a variety of subjects just to see what you wanted to do. That's exactly what <laughs> game design is. It is a sample of many different specific things that all do apply to game design or should if the program director is doing their job. And all of those things may seem not related, but they are all aspects of game making. And from those sampling plate classes, you can pick what you want to specify in. So for example, I studied 3D modeling, coding, basics of art and design fundamentals. I took figure drawing. We took composition based classes, cinematography, shader work and engine, material creation from scratch, procedural node based things. I've taken Houdini classes. I've taken a lot of drawing classes. I had a full two years of gen ed classes that I had to take because I have a bachelor's in science. So it's not just directly game related though. You could argue if you want to be that guy that, you know, uh, phys physics is highly important to uh, game development. Okay. Yes, we get it. I took physics. What's funny is at my school, we actually have something called physics for media and also design for media, i.e. physics and design for dummies. <laughs> it's specifically for digital media majors like myself. They had a class, a version of the classes that were simplified for what was appropriate for our knowledge. I think that's funny. No math for, for dummies though, no math for media. Here's another fun thing to mention when I, when I talked about game design, game art, is that my program actually was called game art and production before I took it. And I think it's actually now back to being called game art and production now that I'm gone. So you can see how quickly these things turn around. The reason why I mentioned that is because it might be misleading to go in and think you'll learn a lot about game design. Game art is a, probably a better way to describe game design degrees because in my degree program, you learn nothing about what the job of game design is. Okay, I keep saying game design in quotes. It's because if you were a game designer for a major studio, your job is usually more specific than even that. So like level designer, systems designer, economy designer, even just like moment to moment gameplay. So game design is, think about it as a theoretical thing, like the theory of fun, what makes things fun. So that's not really a large portion of your co of your coursework. So game art is generally a better way to describe it, but game design sounds cooler. So that's probably why they call it that. <laughs> or really the best way to describe it would be a game development degree because you're not even just doing designer art. Sometimes you are doing things like coding, hard coding, more techie things than art per se. So really, here's my plea to all the game design and game art majors around the world. Call yourself a game development degree. Here's something else I should make really clear. You need to be careful about considering a game design major if you only like playing games, okay? If you are somebody who has never really made anything before of any kind and you just know that you love playing games so you'd like to be part of the process of making them because you love playing them so much you might be in for a small rude awakening if you decide to major in game design because the only situations in which you're playing playing games is your job is if you are a qa person in game development which is a lot more stressful than normal gameplay it's not the same thing at all um, a lot more difficult and you need to be a lot more communicative or 
if you are a literal YouTuber or Twitch streamer, right? Or TikTok or something, some kind of like social media person, those people play video games for a living. Not game developers. Game developers actually generally don't have a lot of time to play games, especially in school. You're not gonna have any time at all. Maybe once you have like a regular nine to five, then you can play games after work, but that's not what you're gonna be doing at work. You aren't gonna be paid to play games, right? So this concept, this dream, it's, it's far from reality unless you have the personality to support your Twitch streaming empire, right? Game development is a totally different thing than game playing. It is a craft, it is a science, it is a highly technical process. There's a lot of moving parts. It's more like making a movie. Like think about a modern movie studio. That's like a modern game studio. Tons of different people all working to one big picture at the end, but everybody has a very specific job. That's what it's like making your modern day Call of Duty, for example. The largest chunk of what you're gonna learn in game design should be directly how to make games. <laughs> and my statement on that is, it's not gonna feel like that in the beginning, for sure. Like in my program, you don't actually make officially your first game, like proper game that's not like a Flappy Bird clone until your fourth or third year there, like depending if you're four or five year. Your second to last year is when you make your first for your junior workshop. And then senior workshop is where you make a full game, like another big game. <laughs> but all the time before that is spent prepping you for being game ready or being able to contribute to this junior or senior project team through your coursework. So the variety of coursework is, in my opinion, this could be debated by some, but my opinion is it's supposed to be able to self-select a specialty that you can go and learn independently in addition to your coursework, okay? So keep that in mind going in. When you have a game design degree, that means pretty much nothing in industry, okay? It's all about portfolio. You just saying, I, I have a BS in game design. They will say, that is BS. Where is your portfolio? You can you can think of it like that. Cause game designer, game designer in quotes, as a job title is not only very not specific and very rare, it's also not what you're learning in the degree program, which is kind of funny, but what you're actually learning is how to be a developer in some capacity, a non-descript <laughs> game developer. It is up to you to find the descript, right? Uh, so that's why you're taking courses in 3D modeling, working in engine, shaders, coding, figure drawing, design, your gen eds, like English, math. I had to take civic engagement as a Drexel student. I had to go volunteer as part of my coursework. What's up with that? Well, the idea is that not only is college preparing you for the real world, right? It's, it's supposed to be learning how to grow up in some ways. It's also learning how to take initiative, in my opinion. These things are not stated very clearly in your um, pamphlet when you're accepted into school usually, but you should go in expecting that not only will you learn about what it is that you can do in games, right? That you're learning the, hopefully you're learning all of the things that you could possibly do in games, you're also learning how you can, of, of, of your own accord, research further and specialize. When you're taking a cinematography class that's in the film department, like how I had to, you're not supposed to sit there and go, what does this have to do with games? It's your job to try and connect the dots of how might this be useful, right? And so for example, with something like cinematography, Unreal Engine uses real world based cameras all the time as a lighting artist, which is what I do, I have to worry about cameras. I have to learn about cameras to render, to show off the lighting of the scene, to worry about post-processing in relation to the cameras. All of these things that in the moment, four years ago or whatever, that didn't seem relevant at all, now suddenly become relevant. So expect that you're gonna be taking a lot of courses that don't seem relevant to you at all until they suddenly become very relevant. At least if the if the courses are picked and curated well, like if your program director is doing their job, these things should eventually become relevant to you. But the whole point of the degree and all the different coursework to me is the opportunity to self-select what you actually want to do in games. Because by sampling everything, you learn more about what kind of jobs 
are actually there. Like I took a lot of classes. I was required to take three separate instances of a portfolio class where I have to go look up what jobs are actually out there, who has them, what their portfolios look like, stuff like that. And that was really valuable because the thing about the game design degree is it gives you experience in jobs that you wouldn't think of as game development jobs if you had no way of knowing. Like a lot of people who play video games have no idea all the intricate little jobs that go into making a game. Especially nowadays, there's hundreds, thousands of people employed at studios making a game. They can't all be game designers, right? They can't all be game artists. They each have a specialization and that's what gets them hired. Another way you could go about finding out what kind of specific job you might want if you didn't want to go the degree route is doing your own research. That's actually a great alternative to a lot of things in game design as a degree is the fact that all of this information is readily available. We are just taught where to look. Right? So I have these classes that specifically tell me, go look up what jobs there are. Go look up what those people do in those jobs. But the same thing is true for people who don't want to pay for a four to five year degree, is you can go look up at your favorite studio on their careers page exactly what jobs are available. Right? And if it's something you've never heard of, like what is a tech artist who does rigging? Like what is that? No, I don't know what those words mean, right? That's the whole point of my degree program is that they are trying to give you an education on what those things are, but you can find out that information uh, readily. The tech art is not a good example because that job is like completely random wherever you go. Like a tech artist, one place might be doing shaders and in another place might just be doing rigs for characters. But anyway, we get exposure to what these things might be in a way that is structured, <laughs> in a way where they try to make you ease into these concepts, right? I didn't know what a tech artist was until maybe last year, right? <laughs> and I was in college for five years studying this stuff. So keep that in mind, you know, obviously point of the degree is that it's giving you a leg up to know what you're even looking for in the job market. Now let's go more into this concept of specialization though, because at the same time as game design is able to teach you many things that you can self-select, if you already know and are sure what you want to do for games and you have already self-selected, you say, I just want to be a concept artist. I know I want to be a concept artist for games. Well, then let's actually hold on because why would you major in game design then? If you know you want to be a concept artist for games, it doesn't make much more sense to study illustration, to study fine art, studio art, stuff like that, which can then be applied to games once you get that skill like truly honed, right? Because a concept artist for games is just a really good artist. That's it, that it makes use of a lot more tools than say a traditional 2D artist. But these are tools that you should be learning in an illustration degree, things like kit bashing or whatever that are more game sort of focused things. They're still applicable to everyday illustration. So that's something that I, or like if you, want to code for games, you know that you want to be on the coding side, you know you're not artistically inclined at all. Likewise, you shouldn't be in game design because you're going to be taking a lot of drawing classes or uh, design classes or stuff like that. And if you're just not interested, major in computer science and, and focus on games, you can still develop games, but why waste your time if you know exactly what you're going to do? Game design is a great degree if you have no clue or if you're not sure. That's when game design really shines. You might be really interested and passionate about game making, but you might not be too sure about if a degree is right for you. So here's the thing. You don't need a degree to be in game design. That's another great point that you should know. You do not need a degree. I don't think I was hired because I have a game design degree. I was hired because I have a nice portfolio and a portfolio that really has nothing to do with game design once again. It is totally about the portfolio. It is not even about your grades. It is not about anything but your portfolio or who you know. So a game design degree is helpful in knowing a few people maybe as an investment in the future, right? Because people generally who sit next to you in your lecture are not going to be some huge hit mogul in like two years after you graduate. It generally takes some time but it is a start, right? You might have a connection through that person, through something else, uh, but you don't need a degree to get connections. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me, here's, okay, here's a big lesson for you. Game developers are people. I know this is crazy. 
I know this is a foreign concept to many people online, that game developers are normal people. <laughs> there are normal people and then there are game developers. But no, game developers are people, they use social media, they watch YouTube videos, they watch streamers, they play games. They are just people who happen to have picked this technical job. So you can actually just talk to them sometimes. <laughs> as long as you are not a butthole about it, right? There are game developers online, on Twitter, on everything, that you could just ask questions to. Here's something as a resource, if you're already a student or you're already trying to pursue game dev, I push this at every possible opportunity. I am not sponsored, I just am a big fan of Joe Hobbs Twitter advice contact list or whatever for game developers. It is just thousands of people on a spreadsheet that have volunteered to be on this list that are freely available for contact so that you can ask them questions about the industry, but mainly for like portfolio review, okay? And they will tell you very specific to whatever job that you wanna be in, or also as a great way to see what kind of job there are, what you need to do. They will give you advice. And just be nice, please, please be nice. Please, I'm begging you. Write them a message like, hey, I was wondering um, about this, cause I, I wanting to be a big game developer myself, or I was wondering if you could, if you have a free minute, can you please look over this or something? Don't, please do not be mean, please, I'm begging you. Because that is the best way to burn a bridge. Or not even being mean, but being like curt or rude. Just be like, hey, can you look at this? And then harassing them about it if they take a minute. Like they're busy, they're people, please. I'm giving you this and wield it with power gamers. I'm begging you. Through connections is a great way to get a job, <laughs> period, but it might feel nebulous. To me, it felt nebulous. I mean, I would reach out to people on the contact sheet and it ends up long-term, like you make friendships or whatever. It's not an instant thing, but there is another way to go about getting into a game job without having the degree, which is independent study, okay? Which is oh, boring, blah, blah. But <laughs> important okay and that's gonna be important either way even if you're in the game design degree or not is independent study I know well the thing is that there are so many free resources online that it kind of in some ways make the game design degree sort of irrelevant if you know where to look which um, if you don't that's why the degree is relevant I suppose unity unreal are both free and they both have extensive tutorials on how to use their engines, okay? Extensive, for free. So really, if you wanted to get into game dev fast, you didn't want to wait four or five years, you could very feasibly sit down for a year of your life and teach yourself how to do anything you need to do to get a game job. Especially if you know the job that you want already, if you are certain in your head that you are going to be an environment artist, which is a very um, competitive job, I will say, uh, and you are certain of it and you know that you don't even need to go to school because you know exactly the path you are gonna take and exactly who you wanna be and exactly where you wanna work, then don't bother going to school, bro. You're just gonna waste your time. If you are like that, then just go for it. Just study yourself. It is possible. There are things like mentorships. Um, there are Discord channels where you can go and get feedback, just like the advice contact sheet there's also just online on reddit you can go and just ask for feedback and somebody will give you feedback that's a beautiful thing about online is really you can teach yourself how to be a game developer but you are going to miss out on university level or college level assets that your school might have if you decided to go with the degree route for example the school i went to had a very large and very expensive mocap studio which a lot of people made use of and ended up getting jobs in mocap and that's something that's hard to do without a mocap room and mocap suits and that sort of setup right it's not impossible but it's not easy to do mocap in your own bedroom okay so that's a sort of situation where a university might be the way to go especially considering that the mocap people who graduated doing just that right or they graduated with game design but they specialized in mocap those people got jobs like that on big titles, okay? So these things that are not so easy to learn in your bedroom, they are quite hireable. So these are risks and these, these are pros and cons that you must weigh, because this is a very complex major in a very complex industry and everybody's situation is very complex.
let's talk about one more thing that's very important to getting a game design degree, okay? Something that somebody else might not think to talk about. In the interest of transparency, you must know about the social experience of pursuing a game design degree, okay? Which obviously is going to be different school to school, but I have had some inside sources tell me that the things I'm going to say are generally true, okay? Like I said, college is a big part of growing up. You go in and you are probably a kid. If you're coming out of high school, you are still a child. You have freedom, but you're probably still a kid, okay? And that's just a fact. You might be watching this right now and you're 18 and you're like, well, I'm an adult. Just wait, I'm telling you, you will have a lot of growing to do in college. I am not really much older than you. I'm only five years away from that, right? But I'm telling you a lot's gonna happen, not just professionally, but socially. And these are things that are gonna be true of any college experience, not just game design, but at game design specifically, I want you to stop and take a moment and imagine in your head the kind of person who you might think would choose to major in game design, okay? Mm, what's the image we see? Mm, let's think about it. Let me tell you what, if you too saw the um, basement dweller man, you're a little right, a little, but really actually the fun of the game design degree to me that I found was there is a lot of diversity. There's a lot of freaks and weirdos who i mean because what kind of person it's not going to be your sort of like average joe who's like ah yes i'm here to pursue game design right the average joe is going to be in finance in pre-med in some sort of applied science you know if you're going to go to college for something you generally pick something practical right societally practical but game design is a great way to attract a bunch of weirdos <laughs> And, and not in a derogatory way, you know, but I will say even at my work icebreaker meeting when I started this job in this professional company, people still said, they said, if I had to travel one place in the world, it would be Japan. And that's very emblematic of game design, the industry and the major. A lot of people who are big fans of Japanese culture, okay, that's gonna be something anywhere, but that's not a bad thing. That's okay, you can bond over anime. I'm not mad about it. There are gonna be a lot of queer folks everywhere you look. And you're gonna be in a room of 50 people. Uh, half of them are gonna be blue-haired queers, and then the other half are going to be stinky boys. And that's okay. You know what's funny is I'm friends with both. I made friends with all the ladies. I have a lot of friends who are the stinky boys too. That's okay. <laughs> that's the fun of it. You have to be open-minded. There are also gonna be some people who get a sort of complex because Something to note is that game design is not an easy major to get into. A lot of people actually want to make games, right? And it's sort of coveted for some people. For me, I just thought it was something silly, but a lot of people do covet it and they see it as, you know, something to aspire for. So the people who get into the major thinking that it's, you know, the coolest thing in the world. But listen to this. Um, I have encountered many people who had an ego problem, who were sort of thinking they were hot poop, if you will. Uh, and those are the kind of people who hit me up later and ask me for advice on how I got a job. So keep that in mind. If you are going in with an inflated ego, you will not get a job. In the industry, you have interviews, right? Like for any job, you have an interview. But in game design, why do you need an interview? If it's something that's like an applied thing, right? because they're vetting for buttholes. They don't want to hire you if you're a butthole, so keep that in mind. Not a lot of people were like that in, in the degree program, but there were a few who probably needed a good smack of the head, but generally, a lot of people were fun. I mean, like, people are people. I said that earlier, right? And that's gonna be true of game design. They're just gonna be a little zany. A lot of gay people, a lot of uh, drugs. That's okay, that's college, right? That's fun. <laughs> Sorry if you're a mom watching this. Hate to break it to you, little Jimmy will have a beer. That's part of growing up, that's okay. It's okay, and that's true of game design like any other major. It's not all shut-ins and furries, just a little bit. Not all of it, just a little. I tried very hard to have a normal college experience and I would invite, invite the gamers over and I'd say, come on gamers, let's live a little, right? And so these things, you, you will, you can have a, no I'm not gonna say you will, I don't know what you'll do but you can have a normal social life. You can make a lot of great friends in game design, just like any other major. And I'll really harp on that, that there is a diversity here because it's true that in the industry, it is still largely 
old white men. Because they're veterans. Those were the guys who were, you know, up on, up and running on the industry back in the 90s. And they're still around. They're not dead. It's a, it's a new media, right? It's still new. But these stats are changing, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people who are not men who are going into games now. And a lot of different, usually liberal, queer people. So keep that in mind, really. If you're a conservative, I'm not saying you can't major in game design. I'm saying the industry might be a little bit of a rough patch for you. Let me pull up that Reddit post of the one conservative who's like, how come game developers are so liberal nowadays? Well, it's because if you look around the office, you'll see why, okay? And that's just how it is. And I think that's beautiful personally as another pink haired queer, that's just part of the fun. But <laughs> if that's something that makes you uncomfortable or something you're not used to, go major in it anyway. Open your mind a little. Let me tell you what, at the USC program, uh, when I was applying, it was 60% women, 60%. That is a majority folks, woo, woo. Uh, it also happens to be probably the best program in the country. Correlation there. I'll leave that to you. But uh, times are changing. Don't be too scared of that. Maybe in, ask me in like five years, I'll make a video what it's like being a queer woman of color in games, right? But right now, I can't really tell you too much. All I can say is in game design, I had a lot of fun and I avoided the buttholes and I made friends with the cool people. And you can do that too, you know? It is college, it is. There's endless opportunity. That's the point. It's all opportunity. So take the opportunities. Just remember, when you go to college, you have opportunities, feel free to take them. They're there for you, you paid for them. But remember to be humble, show some humility, and be silently driven. That's, that's my biggest advice. I could always tell when someone was a butthole when they didn't shut up in class. If you wanna raise your hand at every possible opportunity to critique everybody in class because you think you are the best person who ever lived, you suck. Okay, just keep that in mind. Be silently driven. Show, don't tell. Show in your work quality how great you are. One more thing, let's talk about how do you get into game design, right? I've convinced you, you're like, oh yeah, that sounds like so much fun. I wanna make video games and make cool gay friends and, and have a, a fun experience learning how to make games. Okay, perfect. Let's talk about how you actually get in. Because like I said before, it is selective. There is a sort of 12 to 14% chance of getting into my degree program five years ago, probably harder now. And it is top 10 in the country. So keep that in mind, it's not easy. But let's talk about how people got in. It's actually varied totally wildly how people got accepted into my degree program. For example, I applied with no game media in my application to college at <laughs> Drexel. I had nothing game related specifically. What I had were traditional fine art paintings that told stories. They were kind of comedic. And I also had a silly little essay that I wrote about running a meme page back in high school. And I also had stellar grades. Okay, stellar. 11 APs, uh, 4.6 GPA, 95th percentile SAT, I don't remember the exact number, but really good grades. That though is not super necessary. I think what really did did me well was, you know, the, the storytelling in my art. That's the sort of thing. I would not say that you need 11 APs or a 4.6 GPA. I would say I happened to go, a, go to a school in an affluent neighborhood that made that sort of thing possible. And so let's check my privilege here, that's why. But you don't need that, right? Just like how you don't need good grades to be a game developer in industry, you don't need great grades to get into college. I will say good grades help you in the modern college landscape, but to most game designers, game developers, whatever, it's about what you make. So I know people who showed up with little environments they made in Unreal Engine, little games they made in Unity, stuff like that. And that's the best way to get in. And it's the best way for you to see if you should even get in because if you cannot of your own accord follow a Unity tutorial to make a Flappy Bird clone or something, bestie, it doesn't get easier. If, if you find yourself experimenting in Unity and Unreal and the process is so grueling and so painful, you might not like game development. So as you prepare your materials for a game design application, really take the time to consider at this final last moment before you sell your soul, <laughs> if you really like what you're doing. 
Uh, I can't guarantee that my route will always work with just storytelling in, in images, but I think generally if you include media that shows an idea of interactivity, of storytelling, of something fun, something engaging, that is a great way to t show a recruiter that you are able to think about games, period, right? <laughs> Even if it's not a game game. Like I said, if you are having trouble with the application materials, really take a minute to question if this is going to be right for you. Remember, follow the fun. From the beginning all the way to the end, until you die, follow the fun, okay? That's, that should be your mantra if you're ever questioning anything like, do I like what I'm doing? Am I having fun? Yes? Keep going. Take it further. Push it. No? Don't do that. Listen, a lot of people dropped out of my major. That's also something I'll say. You can show up to game design, you can get in, you can show up to your first class, you can show up to your first year, and then go, I'm not having fun. This sucks. Don't do it then. Do something else. It's okay. Nobody, who, who's gonna get mad at you? Mommy and daddy? Think about your whole life. If you decide that game development, at least a game major, is not right for you, it's also okay to not do it. Okay? Or switch to something more specific. Or switch schools. Or do whatever. Okay? Nothing has to be this forever. Tech is always evolving. Games are always evolving. People should always be evolving. So let's conclude. Let's, let's wrap it up in a neat paragraph, shall we? Game design slash game art slash game development as a major is non-specific and a great way for people to find out what specifically they want to do in games, i.e. fool around and find out. You can learn all the things that you can learn in a game design degree program online for free, and you can make connections online for free without having to pay for a degree, but going to a university for game design affords you things like time to mess around, people to mess around with, and resources such as computer labs, mocap studios, stuff like that, that you could probably not get of your own volition. So I guess the statement is this. If you want to make games and you have a passion for the medium and not just, you know, playing games, but you aren't sure what specific role you want and you feel like you must have a college experience or you have the time and money to burn or you don't know where to start but you would like a degree and game design seems like the only thing that you <laughs> can do or want to do, then a game design degree might be right for you. These are the strict qualifications that I would say you should probably check on all of them in order to pursue that. And through the degree program, you should, should if it's good, be exposed to something that you can then specialize in of your own volition or at least be open to finding that specialization right you don't have to be on the hunt for it from the beginning let the experience happen for example when i started college i was like i am going to be a 2d artist i'm an illustrator i'm a splash artist i can do concept art and then just like that one night i just went oh let me do 3D. Maybe it had something to do with me wanting a job. Maybe that's why. And then I specialized even further. I said, I well, I could be an environment artist. And then I became a lighting artist, which is even more specific and more fun for me. That's why I found a good motto is find the fun, chase the fun. Okay, that's, that's a motto for all of game development. And it should be a motto for your life, really, especially in something like this, when pursuing what you want to do. Find the fun. If you're interested more about the journey <laughs> of my game design journey and see some actual physical tangible examples of what I made during the course of me pursuing the degree, I do have a whole video and it's very long dedicated to all of the art that I produced and my whole journey from pre-college to hireable. That's what I called it. The major is not a guarantee that you will land a job straight out of college or ever and you should be expecting to do a ton of your own work, whether it's in specializing or in actual game developing on your own time. But getting a job is possible and you can do it. I did it with your mom. Many others have done it and it is possible. So if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them below. 
I'm happy to answer questions. I answer questions to this day from the video I posted years ago um, on Twitter or Blue Sky, I guess, whatever. Twitter might be dead any minute now, but LinkedIn is more stable or ArtStation. You can also follow me on all those places. And if you have a lot of questions down below, I might even make like a little QA video or something. That'd be kind of fun where I answer each specific question in a video. Would that be cutesy or what? Or you can follow me and I will also talk about game related things, art related things. Maybe I should bring back the let's play, the format of the let's play, am I right? I'm gonna call it game dev plays or whatever <laughs> and just play games. Wouldn't that be cute too?